Hello and welcome to The Global View on this Wednesday. I'm Andrew Gagan. Good to have you with us here at Ausbiz. Let's take a look at what happened overnight. Trade choppy on global equity markets amid little data, although investors are looking ahead to that inflation data in the US at the end of the week. Wall Street's main indices ending higher ahead of NVIDIA's earning results tonight. The chipmaker shares climbing to be the most traded company on the market, having risen almost 160% this year. Among the other MAG7 stocks, Tesla was the worst performer. It fell after Canada said it will impose a 100% tariff on the imports of Chinese electric vehicles, which would include those made by Tesla in China. Supermicro computer slipped after short seller Hindenburg Research said it had a short position in the AI server maker. And Lumen Technologies was sold down after Kerisdale disclosed a short position in the stock. Paramount Global fell heavily after Edgar Bronman abandoned his bid for the company, clearing the way for Skydance Media to take control of the media conglomerate. Well, US consumer confidence has risen to a six-month high in August on increased optimism about the economy, although anxiety is growing about the labour market after the unemployment rate jumped to a near three-year high of 4.3% last month. The survey suggested the odds of a recession had continued to decline and consumers' 12-month inflation expectations dropped to 4.9% as the lowest level since March 2020. Meanwhile, UBS Global Wealth Management has raised the odds of a US recession to 25%, citing revised estimates of jobs growth. And US home prices dipped 0.1% in June, having risen 5.1% over the 12 months to June. And US longer dated Treasury yields edged higher, while a two-year note auction showed better than expected demand. The yield on the two-year note slipping to 3.9% and the 10-year rising to 3.83%. And the US dollar index has fallen while earlier dropping to its lowest level since July last year. And the British pound climbing to its highest against the US dollar in more than two years. The Aussie is trading at 67.9 US cents. Well, given the prospect of US interest rate cuts, with Jerome Powell having flagged them on Friday, uh, all but certain that they will begin cutting next month, uh, I caught up with Syed Zamil from Inside Investment to talk about the outlook for bonds given that environment. The U.S. Fed is indeed on the precipice of a rate cut. Currently, if we look at Bloomberg or any consensus estimates, about four twenty-five basis point rate cuts are priced in uh, through the rest of this year, maybe into January. And you know, our expectation is that you know, typically bonds have tended to do well leading up to rate cuts and even beyond, up to two years uh, beyond rate cuts, bonds do quite well. Uh, and of course, with four, four rate cuts priced in, you know, the global ag uh, tends to do well, but credit, particularly high yield and fallen angels, which are a subset of high yield, uh, do particularly well. Can you just expand on that? You're saying fallen angels. Um, what is that phenomenon? What drives it? Yeah, what we've seen in fallen angels is that it tends to be a misunderstood asset class. Fallen angel bonds are bonds that were formerly investment grade or one invest once investment grade bonds that have been downgraded to high yield. Um, and bonds that are, you know, uh, typically rated double, triple B when they're in investment grade and they get a slap on the wrist because their leverage has maybe gotten high or their interest coverage has gotten a little weaker, earnings have fallen. Uh, but when they fall from investment grade to high yield, i.e. they fall in for gra from grace, they are now high yield bonds, there's a whole slew of technical dislocation that takes place that leads to an oversold condition. So when these bonds enter high yield, they're deeply discounted. And if you can buy them at those cut rate prices, you can participate on a pretty strong performance after that happens. Uh, these bonds tend to have a slightly higher duration than a typical high yield bond. So they tend to do a little bit better when rate cuts happen. So just in terms of timing then, when's a good option to get in given what's going on uh, with interest rates where they're tracking at the moment? Now is as good a time as any. In fact, you know, the market market isn't dumb. It already starts to anticipate the Fed rate cuts. If you go back and look at the past 
three, four rate cuts. Fallen Angels have been around since about 2004. And since that time, we've had two, two rate cuts, one in that great financial crisis period, one in the COVID period. And both of those period, from the peak rates to the first rate cut, Fallen Angel uh, index or the market is already up close to 10%. And sure enough, that's what's already happened. If you go back to about October of 2023, when we have peak rates uh, of the current 5.4% to now, high yield, fallen angels, in fact, a lot of uh, credit is already up 10%. So market is already priced in and expecting a rate cut. But what's really nice is that for the next two years beyond the first rate cut, fallen angels continues to do well. Back in the great financial crisis, two years after the first rate cut, which happened sometime in mid-September of 2007, Fallen Angels gained 20% over the subsequent two years. In the COVID period, after the first rate cut that took place, actually it was slightly before COVID, it was July of 2019, but COVID precipitated rate cuts. But after that July 19 rate cut, subsequent two years, 28%. So here we set up 12% already, but after the first rate cut, we know that this is likely to be a rate cutting cycle that leads to further rate cuts in 2025. And so that kind of bodes well for fallen angels for the next couple of years. So yeah, do you also need to factor in the US political cycle, given you're moving into the election, of course, and bearing in mind the extreme levels of debt that the US is ca carrying at the moment? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You need to factor them in. But if you have a reasonable time horizon, you know, the certainly the election uh, in our mind leads to potentially a buying opportunity. So you may get dips between now and then. But the underlying fundamentals, particularly for the, the fallen angel universe, is sound. You know, while the triple B category, which is the lowest category of investment grade, is seeing a little bit of deterioration because that investment grade market has taken on so much debt. You know, debt to equity levels have risen for triple B bonds. Uh, interest coverage has weakened. But interestingly, for high yield, it's actually held pretty steady. And if you look at the underlying fundamentals, you know, yields are pretty attractive. You're getting about seven to seven and a half percent yield. Defaults have been very much contained. You know, the, the long-term default for fallen angels over since 2005, the annual default has been about 1.7%. We're running at about 70 basis points or 0.7% over the last 12 months. So yes, it's a concern, but I would say that um, generally speaking, even accounting for an average year of default, you're getting very well compensated and uh, elections potentially offer an opportunity to, to get in for a dollar cost averaging approach. So regionally, Syed, where are you seeing the opportunity at the moment then? Perhaps how the US takes up uh, against globally uh, what you're seeing? Yeah, you know, US, if you're looking at high yield markets account for about 80% of global. Uh, so for high yield, global and U.S. are somewhat similar. If you're buying global, you're getting a good chunk of U.S. Fallen Angel, however, is primarily a U.S. market. Most of the downgrades happen in the U.S. That bifurcation of investment grade investors and high yield investors are more pronounced in the U.S. So that selling pressure that I described just a minute ago is predominantly a U.S. story. We don't see a lot of that in Europe, and it's also a much smaller market. So right now with the Fed, U.S. Fed on the precipice of a rate cut, I would say U.S. is a, as is a strong a market as any. And of course, the underlying carry, when we look at the, you know, for example, the U.S. 10 year is somewhere around 4% or 38 I guess, as I, when I last checked, where you have Germany at 2.2. I know your Australia market is offering a pretty interesting 10 year about close to 4% as well. But I would say US market is about as good as any currently from at least a bond investor perspective. Yeah, of course, we are likely to see those interest rate differentials close, particularly when you look at the US and, and Australia, where there's uh, no move uh, afoot as far as um, interest rates are concerned, at least perhaps until next year. So are you perhaps keeping your eye on uh, what's going on more regionally, I guess, for potential opportunity in that regard? Um, well, our, our 
business specifically, just speaking off of our own business, we, we don't try to make a lot of sort of uh, regional or tactical bets. Our, our view for global as well as U.S. is stay diversified, you know, uh, by all segments of the market because it's, it's really hard to time markets as uh, maybe you know. It, it, uh, it's very well sort of uh, researched and timing is hard. So we, we try to stay diversified, access all segments of the market. Uh, if that's the mandate that we were being hired for. That's Zayed Samil from Insight Investment. Okay, let's check where we're likely to get going in a couple of minutes time. Spy futures off around a third of a percent. We'll get right across that, plus the latest company results, which are out. Join us in just a couple of minutes time. 